Altenburg in Germany, the venue for the BMW IBSF 2021 Bobsleigh and Skeleton World Championship. Saturday morning marks the start of the two-man competition and it's a foggy, snowy, sleety sort of a day. Absolutely classic winter racing conditions. Good morning, everybody. Martin Haven and John Morgan ready for the start of perhaps one of the big focus events of the double weekend here because John, the hometown hero, calls this track home and he might be the toughest driver on the toughest track. Well, the track uh, built in the early 80s, an old East German sports training center. They wanted to make it the toughest track on the planet and they did then. There's been a few changes, but Martin, this makes you pay attention. Omega, exit, don't want to hit the left-hand wall here. Three-quarter combination, labyrinth, every track has to have one. So you want to give it about 60 miles an hour here, 90 clicks. Now the long straightaway above this Chrysler and the Chrysler big G-force pressure. And then you got to exit with some minute steering and you hope you don't tap the wall on the right for this 11-12 combination. 13, big pressure left. 14, you can go airborne into there if you're in a mishap. And straight away, you can go sideways. 15, 16, now you get up into these 80 miles an hour or 135 clicks. Through and down. Boy, Martin, it's the track that's too tough to tame from the day it was built to the day where we are now. Our World Cup champion is Francesco Friedrich. He won 11 of the 12 races. Johannes Lochner, the one that went missing. He won the first of the four races in Innsbruck before Christmas in this strange season. So of all years, Friedrich has never been better in shape in a two-man sled, a near perfect season. And it's unlikely, it's hopefully unlikely that we'll get 12 races in any discipline again in a year, at least in the short-term future. You can see the track workers as ever sweeping and keeping this track in perfect condition. The ice was absolutely like glass yesterday. Uh, the, the ice meister, uh, Ralph Mender, always has a, a great crew here, great conditions. It is a really tough driver's track, and that brings out the very best. It's got a very long flat start, so you do need a start as well, but you can drive this track. We have 25 sleds coming to the start line, including a few who are making their first ever World Championship start. Some real veterans with uh, six or seven, or some of them like Oscars Malbaris, eight World Championships already under their belt and some sprightly new talent among the established names. First sled on ice, the BMW IBSF two-man bobsleigh World Cup. Lamin Dean with sprinter James DeSolo behind him. DeSolo in his first ever season of bobsledding, so this is his first World Championships for Lamin Dean. His eighth Worlds, but only the sixth time he's competed in the two-man in the World Championships. He was 24th in the race here last year in the World Championships. And making the cut is going to be his big target. Well, let's get an idea of the start times, Martin. The track record, 5.11 by Justin Critz and Mr. Kopax. And, oh, the push bar. So right off the top, the first sled we see, we have a mishap at the start. And we see a little fog on the track, which the first time I was ever here, Martin, in 1987, for two days we couldn't slide because it was too foggy. Now this is a track How where much you do that? need all your spidey senses about you, don't you? Down the straight, it'll be a little misty into the Chrysler. This is the spot of the track, which sort of catches your attention. And did there, but he corrected very well. The start record is 54. Wouldn't be surprised, is this up high 55s? 55, 
Okay. You can already That's see the a little bit of snow in the track, can't you? So James. he gets the best ice. It's just been swept. And it will be swept in between some of the sleds, but not necessarily in between all of them. So it's the best opportunity to make the cut. And that will be at the end of three heats, though. So there's still a lot of racing to go before we get to our fourth and final run. Well, he yes. didn't help his chances, Martin, with this mishap at the start. He gets in. Well, watch. Push bar. Watch the brakeman, John. He's pressing John. on it now. He's... But that's the push bar. Uh, yeah. He does twist. He gets him going in the wrong direction. But the push bar should have been down by now. He's yeah. looking. You can see him looking over there. Even that Darth Vader shield. Two, three. Boy, that's... That was one of the worst push bar incidents we've seen. This was really high at 11. Look at the way the back end of the sled got put up. Second starter is Patrick Baumgartner of Italy. Fourth World Championships with rookie Eric Fantazzini behind him. Eric in his first season in bobsledding. And for Patrick Hadn't raced to, a bobsled uh, until December. Patrick to qualify, one of the first scalps he's going to want to challenge and knock off is Lyman Dean. And uh, he's been on the track a lot, Martin. Um, he's been here for 10 years, you know, competing, and uh, you know, it's time for him to step up. Ooh, big skid. As he went 13. 500 up. So you expect it. Dead heat now, so he's not going to get not enough speed. Now you want to have as many sleds behind you as you can. 800's back. It's going to be a tight battle. Baumgartner did make the cut last year, finished in 20th place. Only the top 20 go through into the fourth and final heat, which will be on Sunday. So we'll have two heats this morning, and then heat three is the real cut off that's where the guillotine falls and that will be on Sunday afternoon before the fourth and final heat well he had double digits in the bank up top this wasn't perfect but it wasn't bad here's the exit of the Chrysler and he taps going in which is going to mean more steering to negotiate out those look pretty good Martin I don't know where he lost it Patrick Next up, Yun Jin Suk for Korea, 30 years old. 33-year-old brakeman Ki Kun Jang on the back. Look at the size of this man compared to his driver, who is also a former brakeman. Fourth World Championships for Suk, his third as a driver, and the second Worlds for Ki Kun Jang. He was with Suk in Whistler in the two-man. Jang did not compete here last year in the Worlds. Brakeman might be one of the tallest in the field, Martin. But he looks like Kuska you... has pulled on a Korean uniform, doesn't he? He's even taller than Kuska, but uh, yeah. Kuska was mammoth. Besides being the nicest person on the planet. <laughs> Ooh, tap. Watch out here. Watch him right side. Good. So here's another guy that uh, he needs to make some hay here because... He'll be right in the bubble. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that's not going to help. He's red numbers. Third best speed, so he's he's behind both sleds with the speed. And he needs to pull off a miracle here to get to the bottom in the lead. And that's not going to help. In fact, that's going to push him, I would say, with no chance to get into the... Well, tomorrow, he'll race tomorrow, Martin, but yeah. 5,400's out. He is in back of the guy who's in back. Yeah. And that's a, that's a big margin to try and make up. Yeah. And, you know, in these conditions, you, we talked about it yesterday, if you get a good first heat, suddenly you've got money in the bank. If you have a bad first heat, it's a real struggle. Look at the nose up and down here. That's in the Omega. Nicer camera we have there from coverage yeah. in the past. Then here, it's just 
does not have this little sports car in control. And here into the graveyard section of the track, we saw a lot of skidding in the women's competition yesterday. That's the worst sled so far of the three we've seen. You can see there, that is, uh, yeah, that is out of 13, out of 14, down to 15. Track workers are getting in and sweeping a lot because there is quite a lot of snow coming down. Well, now our world champion, Francesco, Francesco Friedrich, with Alexander Schuller behind him in his six world championship wins. Five of them have been with Torsten Margis. The first was with his original uh, brakeman, Janis Becker. But Margus has been on the back every time since then. Alexander Schuller has not had a win on this track with Friedrich. Friedrich has won with Torsten. He's won with Martin Grotkop and with Janis Becker. But Alexander Schuller, who started last year for the first time with Friedrich, is fast becoming the go-to guy this year. Well, Schuller look at just the size of him. Look at his technique. Old. Yeah. Look at the size of the guy. And look at him run. 513. Oh, off the start off the track record. And the snow is coming in. So, you know, this is the real rabbit right here, Mark. So, yeah. We're looking at history here. Uh, if he wins the. Ooh, this uncharacteristic mistake there. Yeah. Second Labyrinth. 8400 8, up. up, come but on! Don't, don't forget, the first guys that went are not in the top 20 in the world anyway. 112.7. Yeah. Another Still, master class. going to be a class. second and a half up. Yeah. It's going to be 1.2 at least. Well, the track record should not be in danger in the snow. 8300s away from it, but that is a good run. Track record. Yeah. A second yeah, so ahead got of Lamin Lamin by a second. That's now, the norm, though, in... Martin. He's usually a second ahead of Mom and Dean, so that's the norm. In good conditions yesterday, oh. John, fourth place in the women's race is a second back from the lead. So let's see how big the gaps get. Did he stumble a well, little bit? Kaylee Humphrey's had... rocking and rolling. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I noticed that too. Look at that huge unit get in perfectly. Here's the test to look at the different lines. Now, boy, Francisco came way down there, way up there. Wow. Uh, look Martin, at the late height. We'll have I to keep that, that going. From, yeah. From Kaylee yeah. yesterday, she was higher and later at the end than any of the German women diving out of the Kreisel. Maybe he's getting that slingshot effect as well for speed at the bottom. His Main rival here, you have to think, quite possibly is this man, Bavarian Johannes Lochner, silver medalist here last year. He's got Eric Franke on the back of the sled, who raced with Nico Walter to fourth place in last year's two-man worlds and to bronze in the four-man. Hi to Nico, he's not here like the rest of us, but I know he's watching. He's got to say he needs at least 520, 522. But good velocity. Had the bet. That, that's strange. That clock's at best velocity. That that's a good indication. But if that's the case, you should, shouldn't be back 15 or 20 then here. 26. So that velocity might have gave us a misread. Well, we just slammed through. the wall out of six. Yeah. A lot of snow on the track already. Back. Yep. He's gonna. He'd be lucky to be 50 hunters at the bottom. Well, we're looking here. He might be at lucky Lockner. to be 60. Maybe at Cripps. Maybe at uh, um, Kiba Manis. Guy Chukovic maybe might have a shout at the medals here. Oh, hey, rocking across 54. the line. Half a second back. Well, see, that's what a normal human being does as they're driving this track. Shakes well, his head. you know, he's down 900s at the start. He's 900s at the start down. That, that, that was the start of his uh, 5,400s back. So he only lost 1,600s more to him when you take away the start comparison. Here, yeah. late, high late. You saw the cowling split. 
pretty good to set there. Here down in the graveyard. Yeah. Out of Quiet, but tap a couple a taps. Skate. Here, this wasn't Hits good the wall. before the Omega clock. We saw some yeah. hard hits yesterday from the women's teams, boy. Sure did. Johannes. Sure did. Very disappointed with that, Johannes Lochner. What about Dominic Dvorak of the Czech Republic with Jakob Noshek behind him? Dvorak, the first, I'm sure, Eastern European slider to finish in the top three in the World Cup rankings. A fantastically consistent season from the driver from the Czech Republic. Jakob Noshek, 31 in his fifth Worlds. Dvorak, his seventh, because he did two as a driver. Uh, as a brakeman first. He stayed about 27, 28, 29. Boy, 16. I use these 12, 1400s back. 1600s back to that monster Friedrich. You know, the guy who has the best start at the top usually has the best chance for the best time at the bottom. Friedrich did it again. Just the question is, if he also everybody to else does. <laughs> you know, and the... The next, the next dilemma, look at those are perfect lines. Fourth best speed though. But the, the next uh, balance of power act here is everybody else is fighting for second, third, and fourth. Yeah. For what the run that he And that's pretty in. much what they Dvorak. expected, I think. This is good looking run from Dominic Dvorak. 95. 98, 98. back. 55, 81. So he is 4,400s behind Hansi Lochner. Lochner in second is 5,400s behind Friedrich. So first to fourth is 1.03 seconds after one run, not after yeah, two. Dork, Lamin, Lamin Dean for that start mishap he had did pretty good. He's only 500s back at Dvorak. And the start here, you can run farther at the start, and that favors these two guys because the Vorchek's a 10-9 sprinter. Yeah. Here in the straightaway, Martin, pretty textbook right there. Look at the snow. I mean, just look at the snow. It's a real winter weekend this weekend. We're expecting a lot of snow tomorrow as well. Oscars Kibermanis will be next up. Little sweeping protocol going, and all the track workers will be here. And these guys are so oh, the dedicated. Snow coming Ralph hard Bender. now, Martin. Yeah, Ralph's been known to get them it out of bed every... at two in the morning to come and sweep the track if it's a heavy snowfall to keep it open. Here's our bronze medalist from a year ago, Oscar's Kibermanis, the 27-year-old from Latvia, 28-year-old Mats Miknis has been with him. Pretty much for every race that Kibermanis has done. Fifth Worlds for the Brakeman, seventh for Kibermanis. I would think, Martin, they would get into the teens, maybe a 18, 17. 18, 18. good shout. So, this is the guy that should challenge Johannes Lochner. I mean, he's, he's got a pretty good result here in the past, including a bronze in last year's World Championships. Yeah. And there's a decathlete leading the field, and here comes another decathlete to challenge for a podium. Well, last week's Worlds, John, was his fourth consecutive Altenburg bronze medal. He's not been off the podium since 2016. Ooh, but late there. Late there. Whoa, is he? 4,200s. This looks like number had two position. Had second best 50. speed. It's going to be tight with Lochner. 60. He might be third. 60. Oh, 59. 500s back. 100 back. There's your race. Yeah, lost there the is your race, isn't it? Yeah, he lost that so did Lochner. I think the exit of Kreisel cost him because I think he uh, did not get into 11 12 on the take on on his terms. And that's when the speed started to go away, Martin. 518, big yeah, start, only 500. Okay, this is the exit of nine. We'll give you the front shot of that now. Or this, no, excuse me, exit of Chrysler, excuse yeah. me. And then that's the tap right there, this cost. And then he had to come in here and steer hard, Martin. 
And, you yeah. know, I think that's the yeah. mistake. Hold it through there. Yeah, and that's one of the key areas, isn't it? It's like the chicane in Placid. If you get it clean, suddenly you're solid gold. And if not, you're like everyone else. Eighth place last year, Switzerland's Mikel Vogt. 22 years old with Sandro Michel behind him. Third world championships for both these guys. They were silver in the junior worlds together in the two-man and gold in the four-man just two weeks ago in Samrit. So this is your four-man junior world champion, Mikel Vogt. And probably the Swiss hoping. With that, Martin, yesterday we lost another legend in our sport, Sepp Benz. And, uh, you know, great fit for Eric Scher. They won three consecutive world championships, gold medal in Lake Placid in 1980. Boy, another legend has passed in our sports set pens. Yeah. Well, there are two young Swiss drivers they've got here, Mikael Vogt and Simon Friedi, who comes out next, definitely flying the flag. Pretty good. This is the second best speed, Martin. This is pretty good mm -hmm. from this young Swiss pilot. He, we know he can drive, we know he can start. He's flying. He could challenge. Absolutely. He could get to Lochner. This is the first surprise Second of the day. Second at the line. Second oh. at the wow. line by two hundreds. Wow. Peter Ramsidel absolutely. The yeah, beaming like a Cheshire cat there, the coach. Excellent. The last world championship medal, Martin. Beat Hefty, Alex Bauman, and Eagles in 2016. So, baby. They were, the, they were also the last Swiss Nico medal Kuhl. takers on this track with a win in 2015. Look at the lines. Now, we're going to see the yellow sled come way down, but look at the two of them. This is pretty matched up pretty equally here. Mr. Vogt has been yeah. watching Mr. Friedrich come down the track. That's pretty good. <laughs> well, if you want to learn, he's the one to learn from. So, Mikael Vogt, great run for Switzerland. What about Seaman Friedley, former brakeman? So, this is only his second of seven world championships where he's been watching where he's going. The other five, he had his head down. First world championship for brakeman Andreas Haas. Now, Vogt was eighth last year, Friedley was seventh. Chris Woolley giving them the big hurry up from the top. Vogt started 526, Friedley 528. Well, he can make do with that. Martin, I, I, I'm going to have to go look at some video to look at how many steps the drivers take here compared to how many steps they take, say, in a Winterberg or a Cordic Sea. They really run like a, a 60 meter dash. Just, yeah, it really is. Yeah, it's, it's two or three more steps. I'm going to have to count them and to go into my video collection. See where they you know, compare it to La Plana too. So that bad fourth best speed. This is pretty good. Just gonna put him like he where he was last year, top six. This is another this really is good run. Good on this track. Six tenths back losing a six little bit back. of time. Could still be top, top five, five maybe. ahead of Dominic Dvorak, and he is in fifth place. Yes. Two Swiss sleds in the top five. Two German sleds not in the bad. top five. We only need an Austrian in there, and suddenly it's the 1960s again. 55, yeah, 51. Swiss. Trying to look back into our records tally here. The last time the Swiss medaled on this track, as as in the worlds, and uh, Christian Reich in, the in 2000. <laughs> Christian Reich in 2000. So it's a long time, 21 years since the Swiss have medaled on this track. Yep. Christian doing commentary, I'm sure, over on Swiss TV. And here it is, it must be after nine sleds. They're starting to sweep again. That's yep. the protocol. So probably every, every three sleds. Sled. Yeah. So next up is Oscar Smelbardis, the 32-year-old Latvian, was 12th in last year's Worlds. He's his best two-man at World Championship result was silver in Winterberg in 2015. He retired after the 2018 games and unretired. 
His Brakeman, Chris Lindenblatt, new to World Cup this year, the 26-year-old. This is his first World Championship, and this is his fifth two-man race of his career. So a real new young guy on the back. The guy in the front seat used to be the, the best starter. I mean, he's the biggest driver in the field, but Mark, we both know he's in the twilight of his career. Not bad, 26. Not bad, but he used to be a, the start monster on the track, and uh, you know, a little bit of uh, age has caught up to him. But uh, the Olympic gold medalist, the first ever world champion in the sport from Latvia. How many years was he in the back seat of all those other great Latvian drivers? Yeah, three or four seasons, wasn't he, went from uh, being a very young man. Only 32, though, when you think of Friedrich and Lochner are 30, it's not so much the age, I think it's the miles. A pretty good second best speed in Chrysler, but seventh coming out of the Chrysler. Graveyard, not bad. This looks like a top six. Could move Friedel yeah. back. He does, 69. It's close, though. No, he's 300 behind 52. No, he's 100 behind Friedley. 100 of a yes, second. Right. I'm, sorry. Friedley. Friedley. I'm sorry, Friedley. And, uh, yeah, and, and Mel Bardis in six. So another good battle shaping up. But he's only 1,200 out of the medal. So yep. he's hung in there. Here's the exit of, of uh, nine. He lets this come down, flops, and takes that little bathtub and points it right down the middle of the track. Well, we know here, he can drive, don't we? And, yeah. And he doesn't well, outstart well, everybody the... like he used to, but 526, the same as Vogt, starting quicker than most in the field, despite that uh, dodgy back that he's had for a few years. Top six for Oscars, Malbardis. Francesco Friedrich leads early in the race. 10 sleds down, 15 to go. Christoph Harfer next up for Germany. Second World Championship, but the first time he's raced two-man. Made his debut in Winterberg 2015 as the four-man junior world champion. Behind him, Christian Hammers gets his first ever World Championship start. Boy, the 37, wow. You know, we had a couple fourth places earlier in the season, Martin. You know, uh, that start time right there, it's a... Uh, going to have all he could do to get the top 10, top 8. Well, it's always going to be a choice between ha between him and Hans-Peter Hanikofer to get the third German spot. Hanikofer then got the two-man world championship, junior world championship gold, and made that choice very easy because he got a free place anyway, so Harfer got the third German spot. Well, he's not a good starter, but he's a good driver, and he's doing that now. He's bringing himself back into position for top six. He's right on that number in the 60s, 72, 73, 72. There it is. Yeah, he's good speed, speed at the bottom. Seven. Yeah, yeah. So he brought it back a little bit. Is You know, when you're that far behind at the start, he's 2,400 behind at the start, and only 72 at the bottom. Do the math. 24 yeah. times three. 7,200. Se he drove as well as Friedrich, but he, just, he got beat sound... in the first 50 meters. Seventh doesn't sound so great, but he's only 400 out of fifth, which sounds an awful lot better. It's a close battle. Yeah, his start time. He's at the seventh best start. Eighth best start of 11 sleds, Martin. Yeah. And the skid out That's of That's not a great start time for a Chrysler. German team, is it? No, it's not. No. Again, 2,400 is behind at the stop, the top, mm. the 72 at the bottom. Here's our guy. Right. Yeah, if you've got a spare 10 bucks, it might be worth putting them on the nose of Rostislav Gajtukovic for a top three finish. Crashed out in heat two last year, but this kid got his first World Cup medal at the end of the season. Second World Championship, fourth for his breakman, Ilya Malik. He made his debut in the teens with Alexander Kazyanov. Teens? No, 528. Martin, I'm surprised at that. He's usually, he's got a top three start. And here now he's got the only the sixth best starts.
maybe he's not a sprinter. Ooh, that was not a good transition of Omega. Oh, Martin. Something happened for him at the start. I thought he'd be maybe in the teens, and he was a tenth back of that. Lab with the best speed. So maybe that 10 bucks you talked about, Martin, is not looking so good. <laughs> See, that's why I still have to work. I'm not a good gambler. Well, I would have put some money down on him. I would have given him some good odds to get into the... Well, it was your $10 I was five, using. <laughs> Ninth Eighth of the wow. line. That's disappointing. But remember, Martin, but he's the... Uh, yeah. 800 is ahead of Dvorak, and we thought Dvorak's run looked pretty good. Yeah. Um, but Brad ha or uh, but Lamin Dean's the guy I'm impressed with to hang in there to the top 10 to date. Here's curve nine. Steer it around that curve nine around the belly. Martin, that could be the first culprit. I didn't like his lines at Omega. And here, he's got a little interaction with the wall. Yeah. A couple times. Well, he wants to survive today, which he didn't last year. Roman Heinrich, fourth world championships for him, second driving. It's actually the fifth that he's trained for because he was in Whistler in 2019. Had a crash that broke the sled, and then they packed up and went back home. So he didn't compete in Whistler. Dorian Oteville, Martin. like his driver, 30 years old, third World Championships. And they finished ninth here last year. Jatukovic was the slider that, in the, in the threes, he was the third guy yeah. down, and then they swept. That could have been a disadvantage. So I think you want to be three, one, four, seven, ten, thirteen. They're going to be the advantages for the snow sweep. Yeah. Well, let's see what the French have got at the start. Somewhere in the twenties would be good. Thirty-five. How much you can do with that, other than to have to have a perfect line. Now watch the up and down on the. Omega, better than most. Boy, half a second back already. Yeah. His goal would be in the top 10, wouldn't you think, Martin? Well, absolutely. I mean, ninth last year, he'll want to try and, and beat that, and it is still a class field, despite the COVID season we've had. He's about eighth now, Martin. He keeps this... Uh, Fresh yeah. sled on track. This is eight. Good speed at the bottom, this 73, 74. Yeah, seventh of the line. He'll be happy it's with good. that. That's a good run. Yeah, yeah. that is a very good Martin. first run. He was in that number of, uh, you know, the 13th sled down the field, mm -hmm. which means they swept. So now 14 and 15, the next yeah. guy they're going to sweep for is Benny Meyer. Doesn't well, sound Heinrich. like much, so don't think that that's, that, that sweeping's not worth a couple hundreds. He's tied and with Christoph Harfer fight. in seventh, four hundreds out of fifth. That's pretty good for this French driver, La Plagne. So, good speed, down to 15, can't, 16. Mm -hmm. He did pretty good, good in the hands. bottom part of the track, Martin. Might be the first time I've seen him happy getting out of a sled in a while. Next up, Brad Hall and Greg Cackett for Great Britain. They'll go as quickly as they can, so there's as little snow in the track as possible. 16th here last year, fourth in the two-man in Whistler in 2019, these two. 529, that's a good start. Not bad for another decathlete that we've seen in the front seat. Brad has had a pretty good year for his confidence, Martin, considering what's that expression about luck? <laughs> he hasn't had any, that's for sure. He said everything go wrong, could so possibly go wrong. Well, Greg's basically done one training run this week and spent the rest of the time resting up because he was 
feeling a lack of energy last week. Big skid there from Brad, top four speed. Yeah, he's gonna struggle to stay in the top 10 here. Now he's got in the maybe the ninth. 73, yeah, it's close there. Speed 72, the bottom helps. Ninth. 82. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, he lost, he lost, a, he lost about 800s in that last split from intermediate four to five. He lost about uh, seven, eight hundreds to Heinrich and Hafner, who were at 72, 10 hundreds ahead of him. I thought he'd been 75, Martin, but he lost a little time in the bottom. Yeah, he needs to be trying to... He was 12th last year. With Hoffa and, yeah. Pretty high there in 13. Watch the back end here if they show it to us. Is it airborne? Not bad. That, that part of the track seems pretty tame. Of course, we're three quarters of a second <laughs> from the track record, so the track yeah. is a very conservative it, it, opportunity. This place today. is never tame, but uh, yeah. The snow is definitely taking some speed out of the sleds today. Next up, Mihai Tentea and Ciprian Dorozzi. This is the fourth World Championships in two-man for Mihai. Still just 21 years old. 34th in Koenigsegg, 22nd in Whistler, 10th in Altenburg last year. That's pretty decent progress, you'd have to say. Martin, the Romanians, uh, how about the run for Andrea Greco yesterday? The third oh best goodness, in the yeah. women's competition. She's moved up to sixth place. She's the surprise From in the 12. top 10. Yeah, she was, wasn't she? Martin, back in 1933 and 34, our two-man champions were from Romania. Romania's last Olympic medal was in 1968. Pantaro and, uh, and Grenoble. Young all athlete. the way down. 11th best start. Oh, this isn't good. Those taps there. Oh, hitting He's everything be inside. Into it. Yeah, Elvis. Yeah. Oh, another one there. They're loud. Great sound. Audio guy. We're hearing every one of those taps. 14. Ooh. Yeah, he's not good. Right on the bubble. But I think that I think he's. Well, he beats Sook only. Yeah, eight hundreds behind Patrick Baumgartner. Two. And this is a guy who finished in 10th on this track 12 months ago, of course, without the snow in the two-man competition last year. And there wasn't much snow even on the ground. He's going to have some work to do, Martin. He's going to have some work to do. He sure is. Might have some work to do on the sled, but all the times, all the walls he just hit. But the uh, here's the lines. Francisco Friedrich, oh, our young Romanian, though. He's watched some video also of Mr. Friedrich. Yeah. That's pretty mirror right there. Good lines in the Kreisel, but he did hit a lot of other stuff on the way down, and hitting stuff isn't quick. Next up is Benny Meyer of Austria with Marcus Sammer behind him. Francesco Friedrich leads from Mikael Vogt and Johannes Lochner. Let's see what the Austrians can produce. Benny had a good, solid season this year. A little back in points because they didn't go to Segulda, but had bronze medals in Winterberg and Koenigsee in the two-man. He's had a good four-man year as well. And he is as fit now, probably, as he has ever been. Start times. Get, so he should get in the high teens to challenge. Now he, I don't know what kind of athlete it is to run that far. 26. That's the see. That's the difference on those shorter sprint tracks. He was right up there with the top two or three start. Ooh, big mistake. Oh, Mark. So a deficit at the start. The worst drive between curves one and two we've seen from anybody. He's got a lot to overcome now. But there's four heats. Can't throw any one of them away, but this is not the way my, Benny Meyer wanted to start his world championship. Yeah, that's for sure. Six here last year. That's going to be a tough goal. Mistake. He's 12 on the splits. Martin, this is disaster for a guy who medaled in Winterberg, Kodaksi. Yeah. Here, 12. Wolfgang, what do you think? 
Well, you know exactly what he thinks. Barely even moves. And Benny is going to be very, very disappointed with that. Oh. As at every track, you've got to keep the start speed alive in the first few corners, or you're just paying for He's it done. all the way down. Right here. Too much off the Benish curve, and then disaster. You will not see. We didn't see a woman. Watch the steering here. Look at his runners all yeah. way down there. Watch the, watch the runners. You can see them. Steering, watch, the, you see the steer there? Heavy steering up top, then he hits the right-hand wall. Benny, not the way you yeah. want to start your first heat of the world championships. I predict well, you'll finish those, in seventh by the time we're all said and without done. Without those two big, without those two big steers, he'd have rolled it off the Omega curve. Next up is Ivo de Bruin of the Netherlands. 34 years old, sixth world championships for him. 26-year-old Brownman Janko Francic in his third Worlds. The first time, though, he started in two-man. He's been the go-to guy in two-man. I think he's done all but one race with Evo this year in two and four. Evo 22nd here last year. They need a start in the 20s if they can get there. He's not going to get it. 32, 33. Boy, look how far he ran. 34. Yeah. yeah. 14th best start. But, you know, Evo's had a better season across the board, Mark. Uh, his driving's been more consistent. As I say, that 15, 13, 13, 11, 13, 14. In Koenigsee, he missed the cut. But last week in Eagles, he redeemed himself to a 12th. So, from what I see here, he should keep it. 14 to 15. And remember, he's, he's going to be fighting for the uh, to stay in the field, which he should, Martin. Yeah. Last year, he didn't make the field in the fourth run. Well, a good first run definitely helps. Moving. 11th at the start. He's 13th on the split times. And at the line, a couple of hundreds away in 15th position. So, two hundreds behind Baumgartner. Two. Yeah, got Tentea and Suk He's behind not... him. Well, Lamadine and Bumgardner both went first and second. And he's yep. only, you know, 10 hundredths off Lamin and Bumgardner 2 hundredths. He's got a chance to catch them in the second run. Look at this. Look at how far they run. And then he just jumps yep. in, lands. I don't like that technique. I think you got to get in with a cat-like movement and not to... Launchers, you know, and watch the runners here. Very patient. Yeah. Steer away from trouble. it over to the left for the Kreisel. Hans-Peter Hanekhofer, 23 years old, the two-man junior world champion in his first world championships, made a few World Cup starts this season. His first World Cup season. Christian Roder behind him, 23-year-old Bregman, also a first World Championships. He only started in bobsledding in January 2018. Great load, good start. Well, better start than his teammate, who he'd love to chase oh. Mr. Hafter. I know. And it's all gone away. Same mistake as Benny Meyer, but on the opposite side. You know, there's the race within a race. There's four German sleds in the competition. There will not be four at the Olympics next year. Only three. Ooh, right there, Martin. 13th best speed. But he's hanging in there. He's got it up to seven. He's got it at seventh. 25 green numbers, that's wrong. Yeah, uh, that's just gonna have to get it in the eye, I think. Of course, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. Not bad, that's pretty good. Yeah. 63, he's only 400 behind the top. Yeah, considering he's what happened at the top. He's out of Lochner. Yeah, I mean, that should have been Lochner. a disaster. Well, what happens here? Yeah, you Look remove this. this from the scene. He might be challenging for the bronze. That's worth at least 900. Mm -hmm. Here, he's up there on late ice on nine, and that cost him also. 
Not too bad, but then in the boys late there too, Martin. Yep. He's been on the edge on every curve, but you know sometimes <laughs> that late line is the fast line because it means what he's not. What do we always scaring. say, John? Racing on the edge. It's the fine line between, what is it, ice and gold? I can't remember. I forget the lyrics now. Remember the tune. Alex is still there next I'm sh for Russia. <laughs> the old songs are the, are the good are the good ones. Uh, six world championships for Stulnev. His best, 11th in Winterberg back in 2015. He was 13th here last year. And Vladislav Zharovtsev behind him, 24 years old. Relatively few races for Vlad. This is his second Worlds. He made his debut last year on the back of the four-man sled. Don't recall that he's actually started a two-man race this year. So maybe he is the long-distance runner in the pack. Because you need that here. Martin had some... This Bobsleigh Federation of Russia athlete had some very good training times. 13th last year in the event, I just think you brought up. He comes through that up graveyard section pretty well. Boy, those, the nose of that sled, look at him hit there too. Look how late he is there. And he's already six tenths down. Yeah. So, so much for good training times. He might have put 50 more oh, pounds on the sled just to make everybody happy. It's like Ferrari in Formula One in the 70s, winning the Winter Testing World Championship and then yeah, doing not much during the season. Oh, Martin, this is, this is what he's been doing all season. He's going to have all he can do to make the cut. What happened here? The only, and they had snow the protocol. With, it, yeah, the only problem with training times is not everybody's doing the same thing. And looking at some of the training times from uh, a couple of days back, yeah, uh, Francesco Frigi is only... starting 563s. He started in the race in 513. So testing is one thing, isn't it? He... Well, he won't even be in the top 20. He's going to be about 22nd or 23rd. And that's what he's done all season. It, it kind of is, isn't this it? This is up, you know. Yeah. And then look at three. Look how low he goes. And look at this. Look at the runners. You can see the adjustment. And then tapping here. I mean, you don't get points for hitting the walls. Uh, no bonus points for this, but you know, look at that skid. You know, when you have that start time, can't make mistakes. 13th best start. He shouldn't be in 18th. And that's the body language we've seen all year. Confused. What's going wrong? Marcus Treichel with Sebastian Mitterer behind him for Austria. Treichel's fifth world championships. And he has only made the cut twice. Sebastian Mitra, third Worlds for him. Marcus Treichel's best was 11th in Whistler. He was 18th here last year. Well, we've seen those start numbers before off this young Austrian pilot. Marcus can drive, but with that start, let's see if he taps the wall here on the right. No, nice line. You need nice lines when you're at a big deficit. Pretty clean. 10th best speed, considering he's got the 15th best start. Good. Ahead of Baumgartner on the Ooh, split, tap. closing on teammate Benny Meyer, who is a second back. Sure is. Heavy snow. This could be the battle of the heavy. Austrians. And at the line, he's a hundredth ahead of Meyer. Well, that it's not where I did them Meyer. wanted to be, but yeah, yes. That's a well, that's point. a better run for Trichel. Listen, that's a better run for Trichel. Trichel's a, you know, 14th. He, he'll be happy with that, Martin. Well, he'll um, definitely be less disappointed than Benny, won't he? Let's see where he finished last year. But hey, all the lines, everything he did here, other than the start, was great. And when you have the 15th best start, you drive yourself into the 14th position. Respectful. Uh, Benny Meyer had the fourth best start, and he's in 14th. So you can 
very easily say Benny Meyer had a disastrous first run. Yeah, really did. But Trico is definitely make the field. Well, so far, another two runs before that happens. Any, and on this track, anything can happen. So 20 sets down, 21st starter, Justin Cripps with Cam Stones. Two silver medals in World Championship, two man in Koenigsee and in Whistler. And of course, Five, only with a very start. short season. That's a good start. So Cripps, he's done well on this track. In fact, he owns the start record. But Alex Kopak, a yeah. few years back. Boy, a couple taps up top for Cripps, who went late. And he's the last guy of the three sleds for the snow protocol, so that yeah. definitely affects him. And boy, this is not a good run for a medal. This is way back. This is like a Betty Meyer time. Wow, he might get it. He might get it back to the top ten. There's that bad clock. Um, maybe. Oh, it's saying number one now. This is yeah. well. Wow, that's not a. That's a run that's probably good. You can't win a medal in the first run. You can lose a medal in the first run. I think Justin right there is going to lose a medal. He'll have a better yeah, chance to move up in the second run because he won't. He won't be so back. Now remember, Martin, he did not go in the final two-man event in Innsbruck, hoping to draw yeah. a top three. And well, because of that, trying to keep he ended up healthy. Yeah, didn't but didn't get the breaks there with 21. the draw, did he? Yeah. No. He gambled and might have lost, but again, you can't win the medal in the first run, but you can lose it. I'm, you know, he's going to fight himself back, but I'm going to think it's a long way back for him. 3,900s out of the medals at the moment, so he's got to be. 1500s better than everybody on three more runs. That's going to be tough. He Chris could. Spring he, next up. He, he could do that. He could. He could. It's going to have to. It'll be a hell of a comeback if he gets into the medals from wherever he is now. 12th with four more to go. Cripps is down. Chris Spring at the line with first time world champion starter Mike Evelyn. Evelyn, one of Spring's crew that he put together last season when the Springer returned to bobsledding. His debut was in November 2019, Mike Evelyn. First of eight world championship starts for Chris Spring it was in Lake Placid in 2009 for Australia. Ooh, watch out. Pretty good start. Just threw it away, though. Maybe Mike Evelyn, uh, I think Mike's from Queens. He's a football player. And I think he might have run too far there because they came out of the drive lines. But yeah. the start was excellent. But Crips fourth, the ninth the best fourth start three outstarted the splits. Him. Yeah, but he's nowhere he's near the there now. 14th start. on the split times. This is a Benny Meyer run. No! Springer. Yeah, that's dangerous when you tap out of the Chrysler like that. But things are pretty tame at 11, 12, and 13. Those are good lines. He's right there, 12, 13, right next to Cripps. Yep. And he is 200s behind Cripps. We've got a lot of interesting inter team battles here, haven't we? Well, I think Mother Nature sentenced both of these Canadian sleds with the draw to the well. Yeah, that that didn't help. Finish, but but the start definitely didn't help either. We'll take a look at that hey, again. I, 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 let's just watch the brakeman, Mike Evelyn. Does he go too far? What happens here? They're out of the drive lines. Springer's in there, but they've got a skid going that. Boy, that's not the way you want to look at the first curve. Yeah. Great pictures from our team. Look at the skid here after he hits. Look, he's, look at that's the mm. luge start there. Boy, Martin, he just mm. missed that wall on the luge exit. Yeah. Whoa, could have been a lot worse. If he'd hit that short Fourth wall, they'd best have had to start. push the sled down the track. They'd have had so little speed. Now, this is an interesting tale. First World Championships for Latvian Emils Kipoulis and Arnis Bebris. Was really expecting to see Ralph Bertinch 
in the third Latvian spot, but Kipolis, who's only started, I think, two World Cup races, has clearly got the nod. Second season for both men. 5.33, so they clearly back. had a race off with Berchins, or Berchins was sick, not sure which, or, or injured. But Kipolis, a surprise addition, only two World Cup races. 12th in the first one in Segolda earlier this year, and then 17th in one of the ones latter stages of the, of the season. Again, surprised because Ralph Birkins, I thought, was putting himself in yeah. position to, you know, he's right outside the top 10, getting in the top 10 once in a while. This guy here well, he was only out of the top 10 once, so yeah, he's had a strong season. Yeah. Must be hurt, Martin. We've got to get somebody to give yeah. us some uh, intel on what happened to Ralph. Well, across the line, Kipoulis 56 29. And, you know, that it's an uphill struggle. It's a position it, to make a cut. It's his second year of driving, so, I, you know, this is baby steps, but he's got to get some experience somewhere, and this is the place to get it. And if you can drive Segulda. It's off the Romanian. Yeah. yeah, he's, he's 20, 27 hundreds back of the top 20. That's a lot of time to give away in the first run and banging the take on and the exit of four into five. Not good strategy. This little late here and then tapping before 11. That'll catch your attention. 600s behind Alexei Stulnev. I'm not sure what that tells you about Kipulis and how much it tells you about Stulnev. Well, Yunjin Suk is currently the slowest sled in the field. What can his teammate Yun Jong Won do? 14th place last year. He was tied with, I can't remember who was 14th, Dvorak. Fifth place in Whistler, though, which is very much Korea's home track until Pyeongchang opened. He's going to get the 30s probably. He sentenced himself. There's 30. And uh, he used to get in the low 20s. He'd be within six, eight, ten hundreds, and then he'd fly. When he won the World Cup title in 14, 15 season, Martin, it was shocking. And he won the race in Koenigsee on the German track in front of the German crowd. He won the World Cup title and won the race, then went on to the Olympics and didn't do well, except in the four-man, he won a silver medal. But uh, yeah. since then, Martin, do. he's been pretty average. Fourth best speed, speed though, at that spot. Well, yeah, I wonder if that's entirely accurate because it's 14th at the next top, yeah. so. Still closing in on the top 10. This is a much better first round than his teammate had. I don't that's know. no question I don't know at about all. top 10. He's back. Oh, wait. 18th. Maybe not. Wow. I think the... Right. It, it looked like it was going up at the Chrysler. At the Chrysler, he was 12th on split times, and then suddenly it all went away below. What away? 55, 89. Snow? So he's in the last guy. The, so they should sweep. They should yeah. be sweeping now for the last sled, the Australian. Yeah. And there's a lot of snow on the track, Barton. Yeah. Yeah. So the last guy down is going to get the sweeping protocol. Look at the rudder check. Let's try to neutralize the skid. And they're not bad. I mean, you can't fault much of this, Martin. But you know. I bet you Too we're going to see some maybe. better results yeah. uh, out of this athlete next year. To get some well, there's a great story starts. coming up. Great story coming up next, John. Australia's Evan O'Hanlon and Joseph Williamson making their World Cup debut. Neither have ever raced in the World uh, World Championship debut. They've not raced in the World Cup. Evan O'Hanlon is Australia's one of his their top ever olympians he is a multiple olympic champion five olympic gold medals in beijing and london silver in rio bronze in the para worlds in 2019 in dubai he's a t3800 meter sprinter he was born with cerebral palsy so that affects the left hand side of his body it's weaker less coordinated and so he's been an olympic champion in sprinting in the para games and what he is trying to do now is make a double transfer become a summer and winter olympian but become the first ever paralympian 
to compete in the Olympic Games. So a huge story here. Lives in the Czech Republic with his wife, who he met in the Games in Beijing. In, uh, in Beijing, 571 getaway. Martin, how can you not root for the guy? I know, absolutely. And and to see him in the World Championships against able-bodied athletes in a week where the uh, Paralympics have decided that Parabob will not be allowed in the Games for the foreseeable future. I mean, this might be the only way in. Well, he's, you know, part of that Pacific Rim, which gets a designation. Ooh, well, he may not make a full peak. It's really high. Yes, yeah, but it's only his second season of driving. Hey, doing started, great. Started, listen. Yeah. Listen, he gets Martin. Give him the sportsman medal right now. That's pretty impressive. Wow. Uh, so he's competed in multiple world championships all in the summer, all in track and field as a sprinter. His brakeman had never seen snow until he started sliding, because he's from Bundaberg in the hot part of Queensland. And Evan O'Hanlon from Sydney. Now lives in the Czech Republic with his wife and his two young kids. I wonder if he's a rugby league or a rugby union guy. Yeah, well, that's the real split. In, uh, in Sydney, he can be one or the other. <laughs> nice stash. He grows a mean tash. That's a superb effort. And there's his brakeman, Joseph Williamson. So, our field is all down for the first of four heats in this BMW IBSF two-man bobsleigh world championships. And Francesco Friedrich is looking for his seventh consecutive two-man gold medal. Eight, if you include the Olympic Games. And he is already the most successful bobsled driver in terms of wins ever. And he is looking to become the most successful in terms of world championships as well. He has more than a step on the field. The battle behind, though, Vogt, Lochner, Kibermanis, Honeykofer, Friedli, Melbaris, maybe even Harfer and Heinrich in this weather, they could as easily make ground in the second heat as give it away. And that absolutely covers the rest of the field as well. Some drivers here have a lot of work to do if they want to do themselves justice. And some will just be desperately trying to get back into the top 20. Patrick Baumgartner, Ivo de Brown at the moment on the bubble. Mihai Tenter and Alexei Stolnev trying to fight their way in with the rest of them. Well, that's the first heat done. Second heat comes up. And I don't think the weather will be an awful lot better in just 30 minutes time. Join John Morgan, me, Martin Haven, and the IBSF TV crew from Altenburg with all the action from day one of the two-man bobsleigh worlds. Yeah.